it was easy for Van Dye the van that day. He spent more than half the time sleeping. All waking hours were spent thinking about the strange nature of Pung Jalai. What wonder woman! How sweet and fluent is the name! But how severe is the temperament! Just harsh? There was sweetness in it too. How general did she say about the beating of the leopard? And sometimes you act like a self-centered person, why is that? Something bitter must have happened in this woman's life. A bitter incident, or a sweet incident? A girl like this might have become a fan of both. Or are they born with this nature for no reason at all? Do you see anything special in the nature of her parents? Have a sweet and gentle nature. Let the character be whatever it is. What is the reason why she is having so much trouble with us? Have you tried so hard to avoid being caught by the people of Pavur? Did you also tell me that the boat to Sri Lanka is in trouble? Is there any disappointment in all this? Not a day. But what is the reason for her change of heart? What kind of favor does she expect from us? Did you say that you will say it later? What would it be? When Vandiyadeva was thinking like this, as Punguzali had said, he was often surrounded in all four directions. The galloping of horses, the shouting of men, the frightened cries of small forest animals, the screeching of birds all together sometimes became a single scene. After that, there was silence. Vandiyathevan realized that everything was done to find and catch him. The treachery of the doctor's son was also often in his mind. With construction. He thinks that he has already brought the ink to Pungazali. It is as if the water in the small pond fell in love with the Vadeva Mukakanai. It is the story of a sorceress intending to marry a lioness. But how did this woman take advantage of his ignorance? How did she stir up jealousy in his mind? She betrayed him in half an hour. The power of femininity is immense. Come. Only one thing you have to admit. You thought you were so mean. You boasted that you have no equal in magical skills. But this uncivilized wild Mirandi girl has defeated you. What is the trick she used to bring you, who was bathing in the sea? to this hidden hall. So if she hadn't run off with your half-coil, what would have happened all this time? You will be stuck with the people of Pavur. Things would have gone terribly wrong. Yes, we should not be so careless anymore. The sun set in the western sea. It is a wonderful sight in Kadakare. Until then the southerly coast turns back at right angles to the west at that point. Therefore, if you look from a high place at Kadakare, you can see the sea in three directions, east, west, south. In a few months we can also see the astrological rising of the sun and moon over the eastern sea. In the west you can see the sea turning golden and disappearing. Van Dyathevan was eager to climb the sand dune that covered the hall and watch the sunset in the sea. He tried to suppress it. Darkness surrounded all sides. The darkness that was already dwelling in the hidden hall became many times darker. Van Dyathevan could not stay there any longer and left. He stood on the sand dune that covered the hall. The light of a lighthouse was visible in the distance. Diamond beads blazed and sparkled in the sky. There were many strange sounds in the forest. There was a great difference between the sounds heard in the forest during the day and the sounds heard at night. The sounds heard in the night were full of mystery and created panic in the mind and thrill in the body. Even if you see a tiger in front of you during the day, your mind does not panic, there is no fear. A little mouse running in a bush at night is startling. Here is Quill's voice, cuckoo, cuckoo. That voice rang in Van Diadeva's ears like a divine song. He went towards the direction from which the voice came. Bungujali stood there. Come with me without making any noise she signalled. From there it became clear that the beach was very close. The boat was ready on the beach. In it were rolled the mat tree and the mat and the rope for tying it. Two trenches extended from the boat. A large log was attached to the end of the trenches. Van Dyathevan helped to lower the boat into the sea. Be still. Punghuali signalled. She pushed the boat gracefully and lowered it into the sea. The barge went down into the sea without any noise. 
Van Dye the van tried to board the boat. Ugh. Wait a minute. You can get on after a little while. Pungazali said in a soft voice and grabbed the boat and kept pulling it. Van Dye the van himself pushed the boat, intending to help. The boat stopped. You just come. Said Punghuali. After crossing the breakwater on the shore, now let's board the boat. Saying that, she climbed in first. Vandiyadeva also jumped up. Then the boat rocked a lot. In that game, Vandiyadeva seemed to fall into the sea, he managed to sit down. Yet his chest was pounding. Let's talk about something later, shall we? He asked. Well, let's talk. When you're out of your shivers, let's talk. Said Punghuali. Shaking? Who's shaking? It's nothing. It's fine if there isn't one. Shouldn't you make a sail? If we set sail, the people on the shore will probably see us. They will run and grab us. I'll keep an eye on them if they come again. Don't you be afraid. Then Van the van began to tell his heroism. There's a headwind now. Unfurling the sails will bring the boat back ashore. The wind may return above midwater. Then unfurling the sails will be useful. Punguzali said. Oh you know all this very well, that's why your father told me to take you. My father? Who do you mean? I mean your father. I mean the sacrifice of the lighthouse. He is my father when he is on the shore, when he goes down to the sea. Father will change too, what? Yes, here Samadra Rajan is my father. My other name is Samadra Kumari. Didn't anyone tell you? Didn't tell. What strange name is that? Don't some call the emperor's youngest son Pawnee's rich? That's right. On hearing this, Vandaya the van stroked his half-round scroll and looked. Noticing that, Punguzali said, isn't it secure? She asked. What are you asking about? About the thing you keep in your half-scroll. Vandiyadeva's mind said Sorrel. A small doubt arose. While talking to him Punghuali was hurting her paddle. The boat was going. When can we get to the island of Sri Lanka? the van asked. If two oars ache, we shall be gone by daybreak, if the wind helps us. I'm paddle sore, too, shall I leave you alone? the van gripped the paddle next to him and felt pain. Cow. Sailing a boat is no easy task. Very hard work. The boat whirled and came to a standstill. What is this? If you hurt the oar, the boat goes away, as soon as I touch it, it stops. Am I not a mermaid? That's why. You just need to be idle. I'll take you to Sri Lanka somehow, okay? Vandiyadevan was a little embarrassed. He was idle for a while. As he looked around, his eyes caught sight of the trenches and logs extending from the boat. What is this log for? He asked. To keep the boat from rocking too much. Does the boat rock more than this? Is it just playing right now? I feel dizzy. Is this a game? A passy, I want to see if the wind blows in Carthagai. From the shore, the sea seemed like a calm plate. But Vandiyadeva saw that it was not really like that. The foamless waves rose and fell. They were rocking like a cradle. What happens to this log when the wind blows? It depends on how strong the wind is. Normally, even in a strong wind, this log will stop the boat from capsizing. Maybe if there is a gust of wind and the boat capsizes, this log will not be untied from the boat, but held on to for survival. Oh! Will the boat capsize in the wind, what? If a whirlwind blows, all the big trees will be blown away. Is this little boat just us? What is a whirlwind? Don't you even know this? When the wind blowing from one side collides with the wind blowing from another side, a whirlwind is created. Here, the condal wind blows in the months of Thai and Macy. Then there is no danger. You can easily go to Kadakare and Sri Lanka. You can leave and return late at night. From Vekasai, 
the Sholaka wind blows. It is a bit difficult to go to Sri Lanka from here in Kolag wind. Now it is the period between Kolag wind and Veda wind. Sometimes wind and wind collide in the sea. The wind will cover the sea like the curd of alcohol. If the boat gets caught in an eddy, it is a rigora. Vandiyathevan suddenly felt a horror in his mind. A doubt also arose. Oh! I'm not coming. Take me to the shore and leave me alone. He shouted. What are you talking about? Don't talk. If you're scared, close your eyes, if not, lie down. Vandiyadeva's suspicions were now confirmed. You big swindler! You're going to take me to the sea to beat and drown. You see it's easier for you if I sleep. What the hell is this? I'm not crazy. Are you turning the boat or not? I'll jump overboard if you don't. Jump generously. But before you jump, give me the straw you are going to take to Pani's rich man. Oh! How did you know about that leaf? I saw it when I untied the coil around your waist. Would I have agreed to push the boat for you without knowing who you are and why you are going to Sri Lanka? I sat on a tree in the morning and untied half of your coil and looked at the straw. Swindler! I've come to trust you. Are you turning the boat around or not? Vandiyadeva's horror and frenzy multiplied. Turn the boat! Turn the boat! He screamed. If only I had been a younger brat, I wouldn't have given such an important leaf to a scumbag like you. Said Punghuali. Oh! You even know who gave you the straw? You're a crook, no doubt. Are you turning the boat around? Jumping into the sea. Jump! Jump liberally!" said Punghuali. Enraged, Vandiyadeva threw himself into the sea. He jumped thinking that the water would be little as it was on the shore. Little did he know that by then the boat had reached an unseaworthy deep sea. He knew it only after jumping into the sea. After knowing, he screamed, and staggered. By this time Vandiyathevan was able to swim somewhat. But his natural fear at the sight of water slowed down the movement of his hands and feet. If in a pond in a river, there was room to dare to look at the bank on the other side, this is Magadal. Everywhere you look, there is only one water. There is a light wave in the sea. However, at one time it brought him up and at another time it pushed him down. On reaching the surface, the boat was visible. Oh he shouted. The boat was not visible when it fell into the ditch. All around was a wall of dark water. His tongue has lost even the power to scream oh. The third time the tide brought him up, the boat seemed to have gone further than before. The thought of we are going to drown in the sea has formed in his mind. Not only are we full, our half cup and the straw in it are full. Kundave Devi's face came before his mind's eye. Are you done like this? It was like asking. Aha! Uh -huh. What did we dream? What did we build in our minds? Did we think that the old kingdom of the monkey clan would come back and sit in the royal palace with the younger brat next to it? It's all ruined. This sinful girl is spoiled. She is not a woman, a woman made a ghost. She belongs to the Pulave Terre. No, that Mahini demon belongs to Nandini. It is no harm if we drown in the sea. If only this female demon catches us now, she will strangle her neck. See! What is this thought? Let us think of it as a good thing when we die. Let us remember God. Umapati. Parmswara. Palani and Deva. In the ocean of milk. Palakan da Peru male. Kundave Devi. I'm sorry. I'm not going to finish what I agreed to do. There's a boat in sight. If only that girl could be caught now. After Vandiyathevan jumped into the sea, Pungazalai remained indifferent till some time. She thought that he would swim out of the boat and touch the boat. She increased the distance between the boat and him with the thought of let it be a little bumpy. She soon found out she was wrong. He doesn't know how to swim very well, he also panicked, ah. Oh. That's what he screams for the game, out of real fear. After a while he will start drinking salt water. 
he will be completely gone. Then his body cannot be found. Sick. Did we make a mistake? Looks like the game will end in disaster. We should have kept our mouths shut till the end. We should not pretend that we know his secret. By then we are in a hurry. But who knew this scoundrel would do such a thing? Who knew that he would be so afraid of water? The next time Van Diathevan was seen at the top of the wave, Pungazali steered the boat towards him. In a second the boat was close to him. Come. Come. Come and climb. She said. But he doesn't seem to have fallen on deaf ears. Even if he falls, he does not look like he is going to catch the boat and get on. He seemed to have lost the power of hearing and the power of seeing. But there was only the power to scream. He raised one hand, raised his head, and screamed oh for a moment. Punguzali knew that it was the voice of one who had lost all hope and was about to die. As he raised his head his face was visible for a moment in the dim moonlight of the crescent moon. It is the face of a raving madman. It is vain to think that he will come and board the boat. We have to save him and put him on the boat. We have brought on a good deal of embarrassment. They say, Penbut the Banthai, that's right. Punguzali immediately did some things with great excitement. She tied one end of the rope for tying the sail that was lying on the boat to a log that was sticking out from the boat. She tied the other end around her waist, she jumped into the sea. She threw up her arms and swam away. Van Dye the van went near. She stood at a distance that could be reached by hand. Van Dye the van also saw her. His face and eyes flashed with terrible murderous rage. Punghwali's heart was racing. She knew what those who do not know how to swim and those who go into the water with limp hands will do at the last moment. If someone comes to save them, they hold them tightly by the shoulder or neck. Rescuers will also be unable to swim, the desire for life will then give them the strength of an elephant. They try to hold those who come to rescue tightly and drown them in water. Nor can escape from their terrible giant's grasp, can't even swim. The two must go together under the sea. Knowing all this well, Pung Jai Lai thought at lightning speed, she made a decision. She came a little closer to Van Diathevan who was struggling for life. She came as his headline. She swam with one hand and closed the other tightly and moaned. She punched Van Diathevan's face hard. The punch fell between the nose and the forehead. The punch from her hand, which was stiff with pain, struck Van Diathevan like a vage rayana. His head became a thousand knots. His eyes became ten thousand pieces. A hundred thousand sparks flashed before each eyeball. Samathira Kumara's face appeared in every spark and gave a ghostly laugh ha 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 ha. Thousand, ten thousand, his ears were deafened by the roaring laughter of a million demons. Then he could not hear, can't even see. No memory. Endless darkness. Infinite silence.